Hey, bitch. Switch. Yes, goddess. Thank you. I'm bow. Well, at least Clint is hitting the gym. <laughs> Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. My name is Luke What Kardowski. the hell was that? <laughs> of the best political show. It was you at the gym, Clint. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, we are here at the best political show dot com as we are going to be going live for the next two hours talking about all. The latest and craziest news in our political discourse right now, as of course, there's a lot of news surrounding YouTube's major decision to uh, essentially fortify this upcoming election. There's a UN ambassador that is trying to blame an entire race of people for the weather not being good, as of course, there's a lot of issues surrounding immigration, a lot of issues surrounding new F-15s that will be sent over to the Middle East. We're also going to be discussing rainbow Bradley, poo colors, bioengineering, and genetics, and a lot of other stuff that I can't pronounce here that our guests probably will be doing a better job at describing. So when we are going to be live for the next two hours, make sure to share this broadcast with your friends and family members as it relates to the first, first story that we're going to be talking about, specifically about the larger kind of censorship of political ideas here on YouTube. It really does mean a lot to us when you get these videos out there to your friends and family members, retweeting it, sharing it, just copying and pasting it and sending it to your loved ones really does make a big difference. And and we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys doing that. Another way that you guys get to participate in the conversation is, of course, by signing up to LukeUnfiltered.com. And then by doing so, you guys get the ability to actually call in to the show and ask us whatever unscripted questions you want to ask us. You get to be a part of the broadcast. Everyone gets to see you, and that could be you right now if you sign up to LukeUnfiltered.com. If you want to call in, make sure to go to your special Telegram channel right now and to let me know that you want to call in, and we, of course, will be picking on you in about an hour and a half from now. Another way to participate in the conversation is, of course, to go to MySuperChat.com. We prefer you guys use this over the Rumble Rants, over the YouTube Super Chats, because this service provides only a 3% service charge, and it actually allows you to show your Super Chats on screen during this broadcast. So check out mysuperchat.com. The link is also down in the description below. Joining me for this very special, very wide-ranging, rainbow-like kind of conversation is Levin. Levin, for the people who don't know you, who are you and how would you introduce yourself? I am a... Just bring the microphone in about uh, a fist away. Yeah, there you go. I Perfect. am a holistic health practitioner. I have been studying with the Czech Institute for the past five years and have been evolving my um, growth in this industry for, for a long time. Um, just exploring all kinds of ideas and uh, synthesizing them into a practical approach. A lot of what you discuss, we probably will have to save for the conversation that's going to be happening in an hour from now. So uh, we appreciate you being here as, of course, Troy Casey, uh, the health nut, introduced us yesterday. And I was like, you're really interesting. Let's have you on the show. There's so many different things that we're going to be discussing. So thank you so much for being here. And uh, also joining us is Matt LePachik. You might recognize him if you were watching this YouTube channel nearly 15 years ago. As he was a part of my crew, my entourage, he was a part of the larger OG We Are Change group that was kind of hounding down and confronting politicians all throughout the United States. Um, I think it was Scarborough that literally took your cell phone and threw it down an elevator shaft. Lots of crazy stories with Matt, but Matt, for the people who don't know you, how would you introduce yourself? Uh, post-2017, I am a software developer. I 
born again Christian is my primary identity. Uh, I am a specialty in the supernatural arts of the Holy Spirit, and uh, I hate the devil and I love Jesus Christ. Amen. As of course, the next vice president of the United States is also in the house, as we already have a rumble rant by Andrew Jacobs that said another dollar for the next vice president of these United States, Mr. Clint Russell, in the house as well. Well, thank you, Andrew. And I am an unborn Christian yet to be birthed into this fine land. Uh, Clint Russell, host of Liberty Lockdown. He looks like he came out of the womb yesterday, though. I do. I'm a big old baby with a goatee. Uh, I also co-host Tower Gang. I uh, got a new episode of Liberty Lockdown dropping at 10 o'clock tonight, so make sure you subscribe on YouTube and Rumble so you don't miss it. Breaking down a whole bunch of stuff that I, I'll, I'll save it for later. Uh, we got stuff on the button. Steph's excited about the rainbow poop talk we're going to have in about an hour, right, Steph? Yeah, sure. This is Steph. We are change on the buttons. All right, let's just get right into it. As of course, I think the biggest story that just caught my attention right now as I was uh, collecting and reading all the news just a couple of moments ago was this story from Reclaim the Net, specifically detailing how YouTube is saying that, quote, they have a responsibility to manipulate the algorithms leading up to the 2024 presidential election. Now, this is nothing new. They did this before. It's pretty clear. The people at YouTube, the people at Google, the people at Alphabet definitely have a slant and definitely have a political preference when it comes to whose voices are heard, as, of course, they want authoritative voices and sources to be heard over independent journalism that usually is a lot more reliant. Because if you look at a lot of these authoritative forces... They're uh, liars. They're pathological, sociopathic, special group of individuals that lie to us routinely every single day. They are losing legitimacy. They are not taken seriously. Less and less people have trust in these larger institutions like CNN that literally have their anchors eat human brain on national television. They literally describe black holes swallowing airplanes. They told us that there was weapons of mass destruction. They told us that if we just give the bankers a little bit of a bailout, the economy was going to be great. Oh yeah, inflation, it's just transitory. Oh yeah, those, those, those riots that burned down so many cities all across the United States, they're, they're a little fiery. But they're mostly peaceful, right? As, of course, it's, it's ridiculous what's happening. And, it, and it's fair to say, like I've been saying for a long time, especially in this election cycle, we are going to see new levels of censorship that we haven't seen before. I've been through it throughout the many years that there's always an election year. And there's always so many channels that get destroyed, so many individuals whose livelihoods gets taken away. And uh, YouTube just kind of said the quiet part out loud as they're literally saying, yeah, we're going to manipulate the algorithms and we're going to make sure that you guys could predominantly hear CNN on YouTube, which is not really YouTube. It's, it's, it's really corporate tube by the establishment that just wants to regurgitate lies and make you believe a certain political ideology over another one. I think it's pretty clear. Is, am I just too nihilistic or um, am I missing anything here? What do, you, I mean, what do you guys think? This is very reminiscent of that timepiece, the, uh, the shadow campaign to save the 2020 election. Uh, that, that's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like uh, they, they are doubling down on that that path, that pathway, that process. And uh, it didn't really work out so hot last time. If you remember, it was the Hunter Biden laptop story that got buried. And uh, it turns out years later that that was fairly accurate. So uh, I think that they haven't learned a thing. And I think it's extremely paternalistic and technocratic to believe that you can dictate who are the authoritative sources, given that all of the authoritative sources that you uplift have consistently lied to us, including WMDs, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I reject it entirely. Yeah, and, and people don't understand just the level of, of influence and control YouTube has. There have been mainline studies specifically detailing how big tech social media companies can swing elections. And I, I think we reached a point where they already are. Who are they swinging it in favor for? Well, the party that they're investing in. If you look at Mark Zuckerberg and how much money he gave essentially to the Democratic Party machine to get the voter turnout effort increased, specifically in Democratic areas. If you look at the Zuckerbucks that never touched Florida that went red, you, you see an impact that that is very big here and is highlighting a larger, as as Clint kind of um, you know expressed, your shadow campaign, a larger kind of fortification, a larger kind of 
just uh, enshrinement of the destruction of political beliefs and ideologies. And this is the truth police. This is extremely Orwellian. This is extremely dangerous. And it's leading us down a society where if you dare to speak the truth or, or if you dare to counter the narrative that they're trying to make you believe, you're just going to be obliterated. You're just going to be destroyed. I'm looking at my like YouTube analytics and month after month, I, I'm pretty sure we're affected by this since we, of course, talk about politics. We've been, we've been accused of, of being fake news. We've been accused of being Russian collusionists when we didn't believe everything that they were trying to make us believe during the first kind of election cycle with Donald Trump. But I'm looking at my YouTube numbers and it's, and it's almost a thousand subscribers subscribers unsubscribed every single month now and people don't understand if youtube doesn't show our videos which they're showing less and less of to less and less people people don't see it they have a control of this algorithm that sadly a lot of us don't get to participate in because it used to it used to be you subscribe you click the notification button you would see it Hmm. that doesn't happen now you get a front page. A lot of people don't go to their subscriptions. A lot of people don't even get notified. A lot of people, as they've been telling me here specifically, also get unsubscribed without them actually unsubscribing from my, you know, my freaking YouTube channel. So when, when I'm, I'm doubling down, working my butt off, we expand and, and we start doing hours and hours of programs and shows and shorts and we start playing the game like all the other YouTubers are, are playing it definitely seems like there's some kind of manipulation that always makes you kind of question yourself too, because you kind of, as a creator, you're like, maybe I suck. Maybe I'm boring. Maybe I'm just annoying. Maybe I'm not engaging. Or maybe there's some kind of larger conspiracy there. What's the the real truth here? Who really knows? Because a lot of the source code, a lot of the algorithm is still not known. Matt, you're, you're a computer programmer. You've been in this kind of YouTube space for a while. What do you think of, of, of what's going on now? And uh, I, I, I think it's fair to say that uh, politics is just being absolutely obliterated if you're not CNN or Fox News or even maybe the Daily Wire. Well, as you've been talking, I'm just thinking about Eric Schmidt. I don't know, remember at Bilderberg in uh, 2000, whatever it was, we chased him around? No, you weren't there. You left. I don't know if uh, I chased he, him. I think the year afterwards, the year in, afterwards. in Switzerland. I know that yeah. didn't do us any. Uh, that didn't do us any good, right? I, I think. Yeah, you 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 confronted Eric Schmidt, which chased uh, him, and, the, and that banker too. At Saint, Mo- I think you Saint were. In, I think you were in Saint Moritz. Yeah. I wasn't there. I had a speaking had gig in Ireland. Right, you had to leave. And then uh, he, Eric Schmidt, was was doing a little hike outside, and then you had some uh, interesting words for him on this. YouTube channel, which didn't really help us. And then a couple years later, I met up with Eric Schmidt as well, also at Bilderberg, also when he was walking outside. And then I specifically confronted him about working with uh, uh, nonprofit organizations, uh, pretty much fomenting the kind of fake news term and this Russian collusion kind of term, which he got really angry about and started cursing to me about. And I had to respond to him that he should please stop cursing because it will demonetize Eric my needs Jesus, YouTube. That's for sure. It will it will demonetize my YouTube video. <laughs> sure, which he didn't really find funny. You know, I, I always wonder with us because you know this channel is one of the oldest ones on YouTube, right? Yep. And could it be that there isn't just a monstrous conspiracy that you've we've have a lot of subscribers from way back in the day that just lost their accounts or are using different accounts? For, for a thousand every single month, I, that could be a possibility. I'm always trying to think, like, you know, what's really going on here? Is this my fault? Is this some kind of like mistake that I'm making? But uh, every election cycle, though, it, it does seem like the censorship keeps ratcheting up. It keeps getting more and more serious. And uh, we've been, you know, demonetized a bunch of times. We've been remonetized, surprisingly. But it, 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 I, I can't not feel like there's some kind of rigging here. I cannot feel, and and I could be wrong, and I hope I am wrong. Uh, but God, but it, if only we had a solution with all this decentralized technology that everybody's making a fortune on instead of actually utilizing it to do what it was built for as a software developer. Oh no. Which, which products are you talking about? What do you mean? The entire decentralized ecosystem of Ethereum and everything that's happened in, uh, in the dApp community has not been built for um, meme coins. It's been built so that we can create an alternative to YouTube. But we've lost the salt to the earth of the developers, and they've all became um, you know, prostitute-seeking monsters. All the people back in the day that used to care about libertarian ideals and built this tech have now become super rich. And we've yet to see any platforms that are leveraging decentralized infrastructure to take someone like YouTube out, which would be really easy if we would get with the program. 
I, I don't know if YouTube is ever going to be taken out because of how integral they are when, when it comes to the service that they offer. Because if you if you kind of look at it, and this is the kind of double edged sword here, because hosting videos costs a lot of money, especially if you're going to be showing it to as many people as we are. So on, on, on one kind of level, I'm kind of grateful YouTube exists because if I was hosting these videos by myself, the bill would be absolutely astronomical. Um, so YouTube does provide a service that no one could compete with in the market. Yeah, and they're subsidizing yeah. that by stealing all of our data. But I do agree with you. Of course, that's true. But there are ways that we've already developed so that you right now with your computer, with an internet connection with broadband, can actually be a participant of hosting these videos. Anyhow, I, I belabor the point. Yeah, I, I think a, a couple platforms uh, were, were trying to do that. I know James Corbett of the Corbett Report um, also was, was doing that as well. There's specific services where you actually lend out some of your bandwidth, lend out some of your, your memory, sure. and you create these larger decentralized spaces that never really took off. And I think they never really took off because just the sheer amount of individuals that are on YouTube. We're addicted. Of course, I'm yeah. addicted. Yeah. And uh, I, I found myself too. I'm not checking my subscriptions. I'm just going on the front page. I'm just going to youtube.com. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what are they recommending I see now? Um, and uh, more and more now, I'm kind of learning. I'm just like health practices. I'm, I'm, I'm always reminding myself, okay, don't be a mouth breather. Okay. Uh, try to <laughs> relax here. Try to, uh, you know, um, go for a longer walk here. I forgot what, what else it was. We were talking about it yesterday. But there's always like these little health things that you should be doing. And I started to also implement that on my kind of online activity. And I'm like, okay, maybe I won't go to YouTube. Maybe let's see who's on Rumble right now. Let's see who's live right now. Let's see who I could talk to in the chat room. I'm usually a, a great crap talker mm -hmm. in the chat rooms. If you see me in there, I, I, I thoroughly enjoy myself through the conversations I'm able to foment. I just want to kick your, kiss your butt a little bit and just say you're doing great. You have improved over the years. I don't think that uh, you're only on, a, on, a, on an uphill trajectory at this point. So it's it's safe to say that the people need to get a summary of the news is what you're being provided every day. I've been into this for 20 years. I don't even care about the news. Um, but I wouldn't look at yourself and say that you're doing anything wrong. You're doing everything you can do with a very sub boring subject matter where we're unable to offer any types of solutions when we're just addressing the news 24-7. The more that we can uh, talk about solutions and hype up solutions, the more energized people are going to begin and be and more attention that we can start to get um, once, the, once, the, the, once the motivation is not just becoming an influencer, yeah, right? Uh, yeah, and, and that's why we're going to be talking about health. We're going to talk about uh, rainbow-colored poop with Levin in, in a little bit and try to center and focus it uh, about bringing people together, starting communities. That's what we're doing with LukeUnfiltered.com. I also want to make this platform a, as a way for individuals to also be able to speak to our audience. If you're a member, you get to actually call in. You get to be a part of these shows, and the people who call in are awesome, and they would have never had a voice if it wasn't for us facilitating that for them. We're doing a nature hike in about two weeks. It's going to be really fun and, and really awesome. And that type of stuff, uh, money can't buy. That type of stuff of meeting people, sitting down, breaking bread with them, getting to know them, that right there is priceless, in my opinion, especially as we are facing some very serious uh, concerns during this election cycle that is going to be filled with rampant censorship and destruction of political speech. So, yeah, I mean, whether whether or not you're correct as to YouTube or or not, I, I, who knows? But we do know that on social media broadly during 2020, we've had we've had hearings we, like we've had the Supreme Court now uh, take on this case where whether or not people are banned, there was. That there was that there was also suppression. There was also algo manipulation. There was basically shadow banning. If you think that that's not also occurring on this platform, I think you're pretty delusional. Obviously, if the the marching orders went out to Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and everybody else, yeah, it went to the video hosting platforms too. And I'm I would be absolutely shocked if they didn't implement the same policies. Yeah, I, I think a very telling video was the reaction from a lot of Google employees when Donald Trump became president of the United States. And I, I, and I believe they were making remarks like, never again. This can't ever happen again. And they have the power to, to make it never happen again. And I think they're utilizing it. And I think uh, when we're only hearing authoritative corporate news sources, we are uh, being dealt a, a severely 
horrible situation where a lot of important information is being denied to the general public. And I think right now information is key. Information is crucial. And that's why we need to decentralize it. And that's why I think YouTube was as popular as it was. They got people addicted. They got people hooked. They built an infrastructure. They invested in it. And now they created a situation where it's impossible to even compete with. And still... Impossible. Absolutely. Yeah. They provide still... An incredible service that we're very lucky to have. So, again, that's that kind of double-edged sword. As Of course, they're not the only ones fortifying these upcoming elections. As Elon Musk just wrote, extremely concerning to a post by End Wokeness that described how the number of voter registration without a photo ID is skyrocketing in three key swing states, Arizona, Texas, and Pennsylvania. Since the start of 2024, the numbers of people who have registered there, according to ssa.gov, is astronomical, specifically in Texas. And if Texas goes blue, which a lot of Democrats are dreaming about that happening, it's the, the end of the republic. It's the end of any kind of counter to the Democrats is, of course, there's a big possibility that this could happen very soon. And then when it does, the United States is going to be an absolutely totally different country. As we have to remember, not so long ago, California used to be very strongly Republican. It used to help decide the faith of many Republican presidents. And now, ever since, I believe it was Reagan that provided amnesty for uh, illegal immigrants, it has overwhelmingly went very Democratic. And ever since Reagan, there hasn't been a Republican that has won that particular state. Now, with the open immigration policies implemented by the Biden administration, now with so many of them pouring into Texas, being flown into Pennsylvania, walking into Arizona, I think it's fair to say that the Biden administration is definitely going to try to nationalize a lot of these individuals, give them citizenship, and then stay in power forever. That's the long game. That's the game I think we're, it, it is being played now, and it might be already too late to stop. What do you guys well, think? I, I agree with your conclusion, but uh, I will make one minor correction. Despite being classified as a Republican, Arnold Schwarzenegger was the governor, uh, and he behaved as if he was a Democrat. So your your point still stands, but he was, in fact, a Republican in 2004 or something like that. Uh, but yeah, well, I'm, I, I'm, I was talking about presidential elections, not local elections. Oh, I apologize. excuse me. I thought you were yeah. talking about governors of California. My no, bad. No, no, no. I was talking about the, the presidential elections. Yeah, no, yeah. no. It, it goes blue my entire lifetime. Yep. <laughs> but before that, it was it was predominantly Republican. It, it was. was a Republican stronghold, and and um, now you kind of walk around uh, California, and it definitely doesn't seem like a Republican stronghold. It definitely does seem like um, a, a state in in absolute failure, yeah. and I, I, I think it's deliberately destroyed. I think it deliberately is being failed. I think it's deliberately causing a lot of pain and havoc because. Um, you know, when it comes to its nature, when it comes to just where it's situated and, and it's located, it has one of the most beautiful um, places on earth. It has some of the most amazing nature, some of the most beautiful beaches, but some of the most horrible leadership that absolutely ruined that beautiful state and uh, turned it into an absolute crap hole that it is right now. Yeah, I spent 36 years there, and I'll, I'll tell you, it's it's not just the the migrants who some vote illegally, some vote you know uh, legally after getting naturalized, but it's also just the the Silicon Valley ethos is one of like hard progressivism, um, and you also just have academia because of the UC system. The University of California produces you know I don't even know how many probably half a million or a million uh, graduates per year. And the majority of, of the kids coming out of academia are, are immediately Democrats. So I think that there's there's many factors, but this is kind of, this is where that whole long march through the institutions language comes in and, and they have uh, thoroughly conquered uh, on multiple fronts. And that this is why it's going to be so challenging to unwind. Yeah, it's go it's going to be um, extremely difficult. That's that's the black pill portion of today's news segment. <laughs> Here's the white pill uh, segment of today's portion. As Lizzo quits after allegedly facing a lot of criticizing for, for criticism for headlining a Joe Biden fundraiser. Yes, you heard that correctly. Lizzo decided to cheerlead for Joe Biden, and she got a lot of backlash by her audience because of it to the point where allegedly this is why she is quitting 
the music industry. She also faces a lot of very interesting lawsuits, which uh, talk about some very kind of uh, mischievous, unethical, very weird kind of behavior, including bananas being put into places where um, uh, we family friendly show here. We're not going to describe it in, in too great of detail, but it, it does look like a lot of people are doing everything in their power to get Biden in as the next president of the United States. But it definitely does look like there is a larger cultural pushback or even major mainline celebrities are feeling the heat after saying, yeah, guys, go support Joe Biden. And then everyone else was responding, are you freaking crazy? Look what he's doing in the Middle East. As the Daily Mail had another very interesting article saying that Biden is facing a humiliating protest over his policies in the Middle East. As now thousands of people in Wisconsin plan to vote uncommitted in the primary as a lot of people are dissatisfied with his larger stance for the conflict unfolding in the Middle East that he is supporting and now sending an additional 50 F-15 fighter jets to this one particular country that also YouTube doesn't really like us talking about that we're going to be talking about in probably 40 minutes from now. <laughs> um, Clint, there's a lot of news surrounding this one particular country as well. I know you definitely want to go on a rant before that, but this is going to be a hard sell. Selling the Biden administration is extremely difficult. Lizzo, they tried to put her out there. She's done. She's like, okay, I, I got way too much criticism. Taylor Swift, again, lots of news specifically coming out through her voter toneout effort, which also looks like it's failing on, on many efforts. Will they be able to sell this idea? Will they be able to sell this corpse of this administration to the American public and still have them turn out and vote? I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, am I allowed to talk about? No. Okay. You are not. All right. Well, then I'll, <laughs> no, I'll, I'll no, let her guess. But, but we could talk about that in about 35 minutes. So in about 35 minutes, yeah. there, there was a particular case where one American citizen lost their life towards a very aggressive action made by this one particular state that uh, YouTube just really doesn't like you talking about. Yeah. I talked about it uh, earlier in my YouTube video, and that video, YouTube video didn't do well at all. We are, I'm not surprised. Yeah, we, are, we are literally at like the behest of the algorithms here. In, in just a few minutes, we go off into Freedom Land Zone, and we finally are able to express ourselves without any fear of the technocratic digital gulags, which... Um, Feels a lot better than what we're doing right now. Now, uh, uh, Levin, I know you're not really into politics. I know you don't even really follow the news. But what do you gather from your kind of outside, uh, outside of perspective to this larger kind of election cycle that is gripping a lot of people? And it definitely does seem like the establishment is doing everything they can to say, we, we got to get Biden and we got to get Biden in. Do you think they'll be successful? Do you think the people are susceptible to that? Or do you think enough people are kind of sick of a lot of this nonsense and probably might not even be voting themselves? Yeah, I, I definitely I definitely sense a lot of people coming to the realization that what is happening in the world is quite immature. So the way that I see politics is it has to start from ourselves. Um, any kind of externalization of power, whether it may be, oh, you know, Big Daddy President is going to save the day or, you know, uh, God up in the sky is going to save the day. Can, all, can, can, you, can you move his microphone really quick? Sorry, the microphone's uh, a little bit off. You've got to point, uh, point it right. down, point it down, and then just uh, just a fist full away because we we want to make sure your auto, audio comes in loud and clear. Sorry. All right. Uh, but closer, closer. Not on the side because then Matt's audio is going to be coming in. Turn it that way. Yep, yep, yep. And then that's perfect right there. Sorry, Levin, go ahead. So uh, the the working philosophy that, that I use is I, we, all. We, we have to govern ourselves from I. And that independence has to start before we can create any anything any other political you know um, situation. It has to start with the eye. So that means how do I govern myself? Like if I'm wearing synthetic clothes, I am complicit in a child labor in the other side of the world that has to work in a in a synthetic environment. That's just that's just me being a Roman soldier that that can mind, mindlessly stab at the heart of a, a a savior. That's just being complicit. So. The governing actually has to start from the self. It, this is all about money. So this is not about United States of America. It's just United States of corporation. As you alluded to, everything is a corporation. Money is the, is the source of all of this. It's about how I vote with my, 
with my dollar, that that's what it comes down to. If I'm choosing to, you know, go to any of the fast food chains and, and buy that food, I am complicit in several animals living in harsh environment, in, in suffering. So the politics, again, always has to start from self and then we move that into relationship with others and then we extend into the community. I think it's very easy for, for us to, you know, have, we all have this, you know, cerebral capacity. It's just like intellectual masturbation. We can just, you know, project ourselves way far out and, you know, think of an idealist um, scenario. It's just really castles in the sky is how I, how I look at it. But it's just like, how can we make heaven on earth right here, right now? Um, I love this quote by Mother Teresa. She says, like, if we want to change the world, go back to your family and love your family. It starts there. It starts with the self. It starts with the family. It starts with the neighborhood. I think a, a big yeah. reason. That by the way, you had Clint at masturbation. By the way, yeah, I was I was <laughs> riveted. Uh, I I think that the the real reason people have become so obsessed with politics and everything's become politicized, aside from the fact that it's part of a uh, Marxist revolution, uh, is because so many people are in disarray internally. And, and they are looking for anyone to help them. So they, they are now once again turning to, you know, Big Daddy government and saying, fix everything for me. It's like, well, most of your, pro not most, a, a big chunk of your problems are a product of the government, certainly, and they're, they're not going to be the prescription to resolve these issues. So uh, I agree with your assessment, though. Like, certainly, if you, haven't, if you haven't focused on improving the areas in your own life, in your own community, your own family, all the rest of this is kind of a waste of time. Or but yourself, and particularly making uh, small decisions that make you a better, stronger, uh, more wholesome, better individual. People in the chat room are seeing that this is uh, that you're Ian 2.0. I, I kind of agree with that sentiment. <laughs> Shouts out to Ian Crossland uh, and uh, come back anytime. He usually stays with us uh, in the guest room. But what you said is, is something that I've been saying for a while too, and that's voting with your dollar probably is is a lot more important than just voting at the ballot box. And I, I think from that local perspective, I think when it comes to building communities, I think when it comes to of course connecting people and building building and growing, that right there is going to have a far more profound yes. impact than just hoping some politician comes in, swoops in and saves the day. Because guess what, folks? And I've been saying this for a long time. No one's coming to save you. The only person that could save you is you yourself. This nation is in trouble. And I think it's fair to say it's definitely going to be in more trouble as the Daily Mail also has another very interesting article today describing how major U.S. cities are being flooded with hundreds of thousands of migrants after the Biden administration introduced a controversial program that literally flies people into major states and cities all throughout the United States, which, according to even the intelligence agencies, is sparking some national security fears, as, of course, a lot of this immigration is lax. A lot of it is not taken seriously. People aren't even questioned. People who are undocumented don't have identification, illegally crossed into the United States, and then magically are given plane tickets to places like Miami, Florida, which has received, according to the latest numbers here, and, and, and this is from the Daily Mail that's reporting from the Center for Immigration Studies, that nearly 326,000 individuals have been flown here into Miami, Florida. Now, Clint, we're, we're here. We, we live here. You guys live here, too. I haven't seen a huge migrant kind of influx. I haven't seen the scenes that we see in, in New York City. But uh, as our guest told us yesterday, Ivory Heckler, she was flying down here just to be on vacation with her friend. And there was two illegal migrants that walked into the United States that were literally there, given a free airplane ticket that were right next to her, taking selfies with her. She took a selfie, too. That selfie went viral. And she explained the story in yesterday's podcast video, which you guys should definitely check out. Well, but my, Miami being specifically targeted here is kind of concerning as it's as it's a beautiful city that for the for uh, for the first time in a long time went overwhelmingly uh, Republican, went overwhelmingly red recently in the local elections. Well, if, if these reports are accurate, that would certainly be the, the reason for doing so is that, well, this stronghold blue city has now turned red. Let's turn it back blue. Um, but I, I, I don't think that you would actually be able to recognize uh, if, if this was occurring in Miami because of the, the mechanism by which they're deploying it, it, using air travel as opposed to people walking across the border. When you see 
you know, these caravans of thousands of people coming across the border, it's very easy to identify. If you just see random people getting off of a plane, you'd have no clue. I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference at all. So uh, I can't confirm or deny. I have no idea if this is accurate. Yeah, I, I, I don't see it. I don't know if you guys are seeing it uh, anywhere yourselves living here in, in Miami, Florida. How could you see it? It's a perfect place to camouflage. You can right. drop off hundreds of thousands of them here and we wouldn't even notice. And and that's kind of true because everyone here uh, speaks Spanish. They speak right. Spanish and, and they and have the, the worst customer service in the world in Miami. I love you. <laughs> I, I think New York City is pretty bad. Uh, nothing nothing compares to here. I literally I, can't get a burger without someone being rude. I mean, I mean, I, I, if you can afford a burger, you're doing better than anybody. I'll take some migrants probably over what we have here right now in Miami. <laughs> Shots fired, <laughs> Miami. My goodness. Well, we have a, a little bit of a, you know, a, a disagreement there because I love the city. I love the people here. Someone, someone's like, speak Spanish. I'm like, no, speak English louder now. <laughs> and, I love Spanish and, people. I want my wife to be Spanish. Okay, it's very diverse of you. Do, do you speak uh, Spanish? I do. I don't speak Spanish. Oh. I do not speak Spanish, but I love Hispanic women. I speak Spanish, but I refuse to, to speak a Spanish. And when, somehow, when I speak louder English, they they start to understand. They they, they right. start to they start to to get it. But uh, not to digress. But they literally here they have your your Walmart receipt checkers that don't speak English. How is such a thing even possible? Yeah, it, it it's it's perplexing sometimes. To, todas las uh, jainas, I believe is how you say it. Uh, háblame para mat. Quiere, quieres un novia. Gracias, Senor. See, I'm, I'm just trying to get you, I'm just trying to get people to call me so I can set you up with the Hispanic chicks. So. Oh, very good. Born again Christian only, and you have to be a couple of levels above me. You got to love Jesus with all of your heart, love, and soul, and you've got to be extremely attractive. All right, you have too many requirements, but that's, I, that's, I, that's I the only requirement I have: <laughs> uh, attractive and love Jesus and reads the Bible. Equal Bible thumper to myself. <laughs> Not a big deal. That's, a, that's, a, that's good luck. Uh, yeah, thank you. Where can people p- fill in their applications? Uh, since Jesus is my YouTube channel, and since underscore Jesus everywhere else. All right, so uh, send in your applications. I'm ready. The, the, and make sure you include a photo, please. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Jesus. Just being honest. This guy is unreal. I will just say, I'm back on the YouTube side of things, just so you know, my other channel is Christ Forgiveness Ministries, okay? And we're also seeing the, uh, the incredible censorship, which is coming. So we're down to where we've got, what, 600,000 subscribers, and our videos are averaging like 1,500 views a pop. Wow. So, yeah, of course, duh, the censorship is prevalent, and it's there, and whether you call it the algorithm or whatever. What was, what was those uh, Chilean uh, SWAT ladies? What was I calling them? What was their what was uh, chalupas? <laughs> no, fake Chil- Venezuelans. No, 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 no. no. There's another. There was another name. I didn't say chalupas. Um, oh, but the, the, I, sure I, did. I did. I did see someone wear a shirt that that made me laugh, saying, uh, uh, "What was it? The, the the bigger the fupa, the the greater tasting the chalupa here <laughs> in Miami." <laughs> and I think I'm gonna make that shirt in my own version and definitely give it to, to Matt here, who's uh, looking for the are Latinas boring. ladies. That's my T-shirt. Yeah, they're like they're like knockoff bootleg pierogies. Like if you're gonna do pierogies, Just do them right, flavor, man. Okay, and yeah, they, Ryan they're not. was talking about oh, well, let's go get empanadas, and I'm like, this is literally just ground beef and the, some wheat. They're dry pierogies. They're cheap knockoffs of of the Polish stuff that we avoid food. in New York City, right? We yeah. we go to a big yeah. bodega and those things are sitting there for weeks. Yeah, those little and here this is like their fine delicacy. Too. Yeah, they're. They're nasty. I don't know what, what the hell's going on with those. I with just those. want to refine my comments. Okay, I don't want that to sound like I'm racist or anything like that. Oh, I said one of the R words. Didn't mean to say that's that. That's fine. You're fine. Didn't mean to say it. But, you know, the immigrant thing, everything that's going on, I really think that Miami is a, a place where you could drop as many people off as you want and they enjoy the weather. And, uh, you know, I, I think that that's a, it's a great place to, for a limited hangout. Well, I, I reject your offer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving in a couple of months, so you guys can have them. Oh, I, I'm, I'm yes. going back to New York where I, these, I know, uh, these people I, are running around with their heads cut off. I know you want a huge list of women to choose from, but uh, there's also housing constraints and employment constraints. And I have racial a, preferences too. Yeah, no, I understand, okay. and and you're welcome yeah, the to housing have them. market here is crazy. Toby was looking at a place. He was like, "Hey, should I get this?" I'm like, "Yeah, this is great. It's awesome. Go go do it now." Uh, and then he's like, oh, it's, it's taken. It's done. It's off the market. And I'm like, oh, okay. And, and it, it's seriously very difficult to, to try to brutal. find anything reasonable here. And the Cato Institute will, will put out these bunk claims, these reports, these studies uh, that, that constantly say, oh, no, 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 there's no, there's no downsides to mass uh, illegal immigration. It's like, yes, yes, there is. If you look at the, the border towns where, 
where these people are flooding into it. Uh, it's s- simple supply and demand. You have way too little supply to meet the demand when it comes to housing. Rental rates go up. The cost to purchase housing increases as well. Uh, and the domestic population, particularly the poor and middle class, get priced out and they end up mm-hmm. leaving. Uh, and that's not fair to them. And it's certainly not fair to the American people who, by and large, do not want this to continue to persist. So uh, I am frustrated to the end of the earth with this entire topic, honestly, because the the libertarians uh, are very divided, probably 50-50 on whether or not we should have open borders or we should have any sort of semblance of uh, control when it comes to the border system. And it's just, I think it's going to destroy the party, honestly. Well, it's well terrible. Clint, your, your fellow libertarians in, the, what is it, Louisiana, were, were calling to, to arm <laughs> the migrants, yes. which was uh, pr- pretty eye-opening, yeah. uh, to, to say the least, awesome. of, of a policy here that uh, definitely uh, created some very these, interesting these, conversations these people, as well. They're, they're great at PR, you know? That's what the libertarians are known for, just having the best public relations out there. Hey, uh, hey, you know, at least we're talking about them, right? At yeah. least they know how to, how, to, how, to, how to garner some attention here, as uh, I think the the Libertarian National Convention definitely is going to be a very interesting place to to be at. I know me and Clint were talking about being there and doing some interviews there. I still really want to do that because the the one and only time I went to one of their conventions, I was literally there in the audience where that dude got buck naked and started dancing around. And uh, what, what was he? What was the thing? Uh, I think it was a presidential debate in 2016. And, and then he literally stripped down naked and started dancing. With was it his, Alex Stein? No, no, no. It wasn't Alex Stein. It was it Alex was, Stein it, before Alex Stein. I don't want to see that it, again. It, it was a very voluptuous uh, individual yeah. with uh, many love curves. Incredibly uh, attractive. Uh, yeah, Clint uh, fell in love. He was actually my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> one of, one of I'll, I'll, I'll link that to the next time we uh, <laughs> we, we start we start one of the videos there. But uh, and then and then I remember being in the crowd when when they were literally arguing uh, uh, about uh, you know what was it selling heroin to small children and I was like. Now this is this is why I'm here. This is this this is why I paid the big bucks to be here, and it was totally worth the price of admission because it was absolutely freaking entertainment, entertaining. As of course, one individual that might potentially be on the libertarian ticket, even though it's probably not going to happen, is of course a Robert F. Kennedy Jr. that recently was actually interviewed by CNN and came out and said that Biden is a bigger threat to democracy than Donald Trump. Now this probably stunned. A lot of CNN viewers, the the old geriatrics people, the people at the airport that were passing through the terminals, the people who, of course, were scrolling by their television shows. And uh, this is something that I I think is worth talking about here, as, of course, CNN also smeared RFK Jr. They actually got one of his grandsons to come out and talk pretty much ish uh, about him. But I think this was a a very telling moment, and I think what RFK Jr. is saying here kind of embodies his larger kind of political maneuvering that he's making, especially with who he just picked as his vice president running mate. Uh, These comments are are, are pretty big. Who did he pick? He picked... uh, What's her name? Yeah, that's that's exactly. Anyway, why. I want to ask questions like that. That is exciting. No, no, I didn't no, even no, know no. he was running Libertarian. No, no, no. He, that would be th- amazing. Th- there's there's talks of him running on the Libertarian ticket. He probably won't. Do it. He picked his VP, and he's taken away Clint's spot. And Clint is supposed to be elected as as the yeah. VP because you can't the, you cannot select yeah. your VP. So it's it's almost certain that he's going to be running as an independent at this point. But so I, he he picked Sergey Brim's ex-wife who has a bunch of money and is connected to Silicon Valley and she's a lawyer that is also connected to a lot of leftist liberal causes and has ties to Mr. Soros. So he picked a a very left-wing establishment figure to be his running mate, which could be why he's now on CNN as, of course, she has a lot of pull. She has a lot of money. I'm sick of him apologizing for his voice all the time. You know what, RFK? I love your voice. It's fine. You're very intelligent. You speak 1,000 things of fact in in two minutes. We've heard so much fluff from everybody else. You're like a student of history. You can have a horrible voice. I don't care. Nicole Shanahan is her name. I just just looked it up to remember. Uh, everyone announced it, and they, and everyone was like, "Who? Who? Who is the VP?" Yeah. No, no, she she's not in the political kind of sphere. No one really knows her. She's not really active at all, even on social media. Yeah, but I will say this about RFK's point. Um, you know, to me, it's so self evident. It it hardly even requires proving out the thesis, but. I'll, I'll prove it out nonetheless. Uh, to anybody that actually looks at Trump and says that he's more of a threat, uh, I mean, 
the, you got to keep in mind that when they use this phrase, a threat to democracy, what they're what they're strictly talking about is J6. They're not trying to talk about how they actually behaved as a president broadly. If you actually look at Biden's behavior as a president, he's used an exceedingly large amount of, ex of executive orders. Uh, he has also done everything in his power to open the border as wide as possible. He has also had multiple uh, proxy wars that are undeclared and, as far as I'm concerned, unconstitutional. He has also used the three-letter agencies to go to big tech platforms and instruct them to shadow ban and censor and deplatform people, which I might add is a violation of the First Amendment because, mm. well, platforms do have that option. The government cannot use a proxy like a social media platform to do something that would otherwise be unconstitutional. And if they do, it is un unconstitutional, in fact. Uh, on top of that, he tried to mandate things into your body. I mean, the list goes on and on. If you're talking about someone who's a threat to the Bill of Rights, it is Joe Biden, number one, and it ain't close. Uh, Trump, not a fan of his, particularly with what happened during 2020, but saying that he's a bigger threat to democracy is absolutely absurd, and kudos to RFK Jr. for telling it like it is. I, I absolutely disagree with you. All right. Because it's not Joe Biden. Well, yeah. It's, it's the puppet masters behind Joe Biden yeah, that are a bigger are threat dangerous. to democracy yeah. that don't care about democracy because we don't even live in a democracy. We, we live under a democratic republic and we're supposed to respect the, you know, the rights of the minorities just like we do the majority. But I, I, there definitely is a larger push to, to, to create more mob rule kind of mentalities out there that are being kind of instituted through political means. Now, uh, RFK Jr. does say a lot of really awesome stuff, specifically specifically when it comes to Assange, when it comes to Snowden, when it comes to people's personal liberty, when it comes to their bodily autonomy. But he also says a lot of really weird stuff, especially when it comes to policies in the Middle East, especially when it comes to uh, situations that involve him being on private airplanes of a Mr. Epstein going back all the way to the 1990s. So, yeah, uh, there's also that. So his, who, who looks better in a bathing suit between the three of them? Let's be real. Um, not okay. something. Not something that I personally think about myself. Well, <laughs> That's Biden not, not attractive in a bathing suit. Trump would never see him in that position. I but assure it, you, he doesn't look good in a bathing suit. But RFK are, are you sure? I thought you were interested in Hispanic women. Why are you now talking about RFK? I don't know. I'm just going with the flow. This this image entered into my mind. <laughs> of one of the grievances I have with Biden is how he looks in a bathing suit. I just I think it, it inappropriately represents our country. All right. Well, RFK Jr. in a bathing suit. Hands down. If that's if that's how we're selecting the next president, he's the guy. That's what people care about more than what we're talking about. Come on. Uh, I, hey, not hey, wrong. <laughs> hey, those push it videos and those like pull up videos that RFK Half Jr. Reps. did with his jeans <laughs> on. Hey, number one, that motivates a, a lot of women to vote for him. There's a huge voting woman base that that uh, purely vote on aesthetics. There's there's an aspect of this that that is real. But two, it, it's also awesome and incredible to have someone at that age who's probably taken, you know, some substances to help him uh, at his elderly kind of uh, male age. But but it's still awesome to see that idea promoted because I don't see Trump doing that. I don't see Biden doing that. I want to see them do push-ups. I want to see them do pull-ups. I want to see them uh, kind of trying to influence the general public to work out, to become the strongest, best versions yeah, of themselves. Yeah, give us themselves. some health theater. Yeah. Fool us in that regard. We're, we've been... Yeah. Vivek, Vivek Ramaswamy played into it too. He had his whole uh, tennis game uh, that that he highlighted where he chest also, hair. Yeah, oh yeah, my god, yeah. the chest hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that galvanizes the votes. That's the type of TMZ I've, world we're living in. And uh, who knows? Next up, uh, a bikini competition for the, for the presidency of the United <laughs> States is something that probably will be a reality with just how far crazy down the line of idiocracy we are going. So, uh, Levin, who would you vote for in a bikini contest uh, between RFK Jr., Donald Trump, and Joe Biden? Yeah, I, no homo. I, I wouldn't. Uh... <laughs> I wouldn't even participate in that in that type of a parameter. I would have to be. I would have to vote for myself and and make my own uh, campaign. Got it. Got it. That that makes totally sense. I want to ask. I want to ask the audience right now on YouTube. I could start a poll here, and I'm going to ask who looks better in a bikini. <laughs> Well, besides the bikini thing, I've had Trump. moments of listening to RFK talk, and I've literally had cries coming in my eyes because of the, the level of intelligence and how Trump, I, although I, I love him in a lot of ways, he's a master of generics. And to hear such level of specificity coming out of his mouth, uh, RFK really has sold me. Um, you know, Robbie and I were out in the streets doing some polling, whether it's just Trump or Biden, Trump or Biden, in the back of my mind, 
I really wanted to have that third option to see what people would say about the guy. Unfortunately, the results here in Miami is that uh, we are looking at a pro Biden response. Really? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Because I, I see a lot of people oh, interview people yeah. on the streets, and a lot of people are like, "Oh yeah, Trump. We got to go Trump." Yeah. I'm just talking about you know random conversations in elevators. You know how Robbie is, how he talks with everybody. Yeah. You know, and, and it, that, it'll be cool to to hit the streets. People are, are saying that is a really dumb poll, and I don't know if you're talking about me or I don't know if you're talking about the poll that we I just put up on the YouTube. Pre the presidential <laughs> parameters should be based on how well a person can organize and, and manage things. I think uh, you know, but primarily but, based but, on aesthetics, that we would have to look at. Don't yeah. tell Clint that he was getting his bikini ready. Uh, he's he's ready. Clint is ready for the bikini competition. That's, Please put the towel on. Yeah. So I have uh, six months to get in shape. RFK, I'm coming for you, buddy. We'll, we'll see you on the stage. We'll get the steroids Fox ready. Off. Yeah. Let's go. We'll get the steroids ready for Clint. Oh, pick a uh, ball. As, as also very interestingly today, we heard from Tulsi Gabbard that allegedly RFK Jr. asked her to be his VP pick. But according to her, quote, it just didn't work out. Now, a Tulsi Gabbard, RFK um, a, a election uh, couple, that, that would have definitely, I think, galvanized a lot of people. That would have definitely got a lot of support. Would that have swung you guys to vote for RFK if Tulsi Gabbard was his, was his VP? I don't know. Let's see a picture. What's she look like? You know, Tulsi Gabbard's pretty... Uh, oh, yeah, I've seen her. Yeah, That's I mean, no. it would be the most attractive ticket in my lifetime, but not it doesn't change the fact that they are. She has uh, witch face. Not adequately anti-war enough like for an my exotic taste. Spanish. I don't know. I don't trust her. Looking at her face, I, I think. don't. I don't like that uh, we're going pure physiognomy when it comes to selecting the next president of the United States. But <laughs> I'm sorry. Here I, we are. I, I backslid into my old personality. <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, a rumble rap from uh, Z Warlock 505 saying, do we know how often RFK Jr. visited Mr. Epstein's island? Maybe that's why he picked an unpopular VP. Um, we don't know if he was there. We do know that he was on his airplane for a fact as he came out and admitted it. And then uh, shortly afterwards, there was court documents that were released highlighting that he was actually on the plane, which is uh, pretty interesting here. We got another uh, rumble rant by Z, uh, Z Warlock saying, lovely day, lovely people. I hope you all are enjoying the warming weather. Viva la libertad. And yes, we, we are enjoying the warmer weather, which white men are being blamed for. As <laughs> we had a UN climate advisor literally come out and say the climate crisis is a white man made creation. Yes, you heard that correctly. Here is Alicia Shadiki saying this to the people at a public event just a couple of moments ago. And I say this because the climate crisis is not past. The climate crisis is not a result of natural disasters. It's actually man-made. Mm -hmm. It's a result of... I'll say it again, because I think they missed it. <laughs> the climate crisis is man-made. <laughs> and it's not just man-made, it's white man-made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> years of colonialism, years of racial oppression. And so if you want to get involved, the way that we save our planet is when we protect the most vulnerable communities among us. And this includes black trans women. This includes indigenous peoples. And this is why it includes children and young folk. Because when we protect them, then we can protect everybody else. All right. Now, to be fair, she does make an interesting point because Clint does have a lot of gas. And if we're counting gas that affects the climate change, uh, she has somewhat of, a, of an argument there, right? Mm, I don't agree, uh, Luke. I don't yeah. agree, Steph. <laughs> uh, look, I am really like sincerely concerned that they're going to build gulags for people that look like me at some point and not do this in the future. Like, what are we doing why are we talking about that we're changing the temperature of the earth because of white men? That's really where we're at? This is so it's so deranged. And she she lists it off as if like capitalism is strictly the the byproduct of white men, as if everyone doesn't participate in capitalism on most parts of the world. We're talking about trade amongst people. That's how you get this for that. Like the, I, it's just it's just totally nuts. It's totally dangerous. It's totally divisive. It's obviously Marxist. I reject all of it. 
And I would like to say more, but I'll save it for Rumble. Absolutely. What do, you, what, do you, what, do you, what do you guys think? That, that uh, sounded like a, like a poet recital. Everybody was like, hmm. Yeah. Uh, say it again, it, queen. It wasn't, it wasn't like, a, like an actual thought process falling from one sentence to the other. It was more like a... <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't cl- like snap their fingers at the end. <laughs> yeah, as, they're experts in virtue signaling for sure. Well, the sound is triggering. It's it's. Uh, I think it's sparkly f- uh, fingers that yeah. they have to do now in order to. Kind but of we feel sorry for these people, right? We don't just let rage get to our head when we hear people going off like that. I have to take no, every thought. No, no. I, I, as soon as I, I blame Clint right away, I'm like, yeah, that, that white guy's it's absolutely responsible no, for I, making the weather not good or I, enough. I respond with rage every time I hear things like that. Really, just being totally honest. Yes. I, okay, I, but I think you, it's you funny. have a response that comes out of your mouth, or do you ever try to settle yourself down in order to have that patience and compassion to be able to see how they got to that position where they're so convinced in their minds that what they're saying is true. I they mean, think they're brilliant. Yeah. I, per, I professionally analyze this. I know exactly how they came to these conclusions. It doesn't change the fact, just as it doesn't change the fact when you have some sort of genocidal uh, movement, you don't, you don't stand there and go, well, let me, let me sympathize with these people. Let me really see, like, no, like these people are a threat to me. But like, the sympathy helps us to relate to them so we can have conversations with them. And I notice that when I just go, because when I hear these people going off, it makes me so sick to my stomach. I can't stand them anymore. And it dehumanizes them. I always have to pause myself so that I can sort of get myself on the level where I can have a human conversation I, with I, them. I, I, don't know I, if I, kinda, I don't know if you uh, heard this, but she was actively dehumanizing you. Every, yes, She's a yeah. demon. Yeah. No, no, she's you know she's completely been well, infiltrated. Well, that sounds pretty judgmental. I don't know. Well, no, I am a judgmental person. I, <laughs> yeah. just, I take those thoughts captives as well, so that I, I, you know okay. I can't I, help but have eyes and ears and have discernment. I'm, I'm kind of with Matt. I mean, there's so much outrage out there, and I think it's meant to make you feel outraged. That I just refuse to to feel that kind of uh, emotion and a response to it. Obviously, she yeah. is deranged. Obviously, she has a lot of hate within her. That doesn't mean she has to spread that hate to me. And I'll, I'll bet I'll bet you know a lot of money right now. She probably has a white boyfriend. She probably, <laughs> she probably is oppressed in the streets, but colonized in the sheets. If you know what I mean, there. As of course, a lot of these women who hate white guys always seem to date them for some reason. Uh, I don't know why. It's it's so weird. Ilhan but, and AOC, it, and yeah. they all got these. Well, these Ilhan, white... Ilhan's with uh, Top Lobster, no? Oh, maybe. No, yeah, no, no. They're brother that, and sister. Yeah, they. She broke up with her sister. brother and married a white dude. I think. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see what she looked like. So I couldn't see it playing back. So I don't have a full opinion. Um. <laughs> But uh, no, no, she definitely looks um, Do interesting to say the least. But her social media is, she looks is, like is Frida still. Kahlo. Is she overweight? Uh, no, it's hard to tell. She's wearing like a girdle. She's wearing. She's wearing like this like weird piece of clothing. Okay. I don't know how you guys would uh, is describe she a burner? it. It looks bohemian. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we gotta get a TV Indian in here. Even. But if you look at her social media, it's all white man bad. White man did this. A white man did all that. And I'm like, oh. dime a dozen. Yeah, but we, we 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 did what? We helped build civilization. <laughs> like, um, it's 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 ridiculous. And you know, with a lot of these individuals, I I, I think you know, prayer and consideration definitely is the better See, approach. Here, yeah, here. here's the thing. Let's do it right just, now. Actually, let's pray for her right now. Here, Lord, here, we just thank you, Lord, that she would be completely and totally be touched by your mercy struck your down by a lightning <laughs> no absolutely not <laughs> that's what I we think not, that's how we pray I did expect him to say that I appreciate that um, yeah, I think there is definitely a place to you know have rage um, you know even from a bib- biblical perspective there's a there's a time where you draw the line and you stay on your ideals yeah and like sure. the, the whole first Bible <laughs> but we first pretty rageful we wrestle not against flesh and blood you know Ephesians 6 we got to look at this and look at these people as victims I remember back in the day when we were doing all these political confrontations and when I the first time the Lord spoke to me where I had to see a George Bush you know as a victim right so oftentimes we really have to understand that these wait you got you're gonna have to elaborate how is George Bush a victim we might have to save that for the rumble portion because we are all two of minutes human out. child sacrificing scum are two, actually two victims. minutes out see, uh, again Clint I told you just hold on for right. further for uh, a minute Eric there. Eric loves this type As, of stuff. He's we'll, actually we'll, going to boost you. We'll get, into, we'll get into the demon stuff in, in a little bit as, of course, the spiritual aspect will be brought up. We're going to be talking about that one country in the Middle East that a lot of people here on YouTube don't like us talking about. We're going to be talking
talking about a lot of crazy stuff developing all over the world right now on rumble.com forward slash we are change rumble.com forward slash we are change you could find us there right now and uh, rumble.com forward slash we are change is our channel and definitely go continue to watch us there also shouts out to get into gold now.com American Hartford gold if you're looking to diversify your assets check out get into gold now.com Josh our producer will be putting that in the comment section down below I wanted to shout them out because they're interested in doing more work with us and the more you guys check them out the more work we will be doing with cool companies that are doing cool things like get into gold now dot com uh, as we move over and transition off this platform that censors people for their political thoughts and expression levin where can people find you and check out more of your work they can find me at extreme swami on instagram or you just give me a google search and you can find me Matt, where can people, where where can all the beautiful, bodacious, Latina, God-fearing women find you? By Inside the Bible. You can go on YouTube and you can start listening to the audio Bible for free. Now, my uh, my handle is since Jesus, S-I-N-C-E-J-E-S-U-S, since underscore Jesus everywhere except for YouTube. I only have one plug for you tonight, and that is to go to YouTube or Rumble, go to Liberty Lockdown and hit subscribe because I got a new episode dropping at 10 o'clock tonight and you're not going to want to miss it. I am going to rant and rave in all the ways that you have now come to know and love me. Steph. Steph, we are changed on Insta. Steph, WRC on X. All right. Remember, if you are a member of LukeUnfiltered.com, this is the time 